Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Bite Size History on History with Audrey D. In today's episode, we are going to be looking at the Epic of Gilgamesh and the characters that are represented within this story. Now, we're going to be focusing on the epic itself and the characters for this episode. And then in our next episode, we are going to be going through and looking at some of the key points as well as the themes and different types of motifs that go on within this story as well. If you like Bite Size History on History with Audrey D so far, please make sure that you are hitting that like and subscribe button. Also, please make sure that you find me on Instagram and TikTok under History with Audrey D. You can support this channel through Patreon. You can find me as History with Audrey D as well. Let's go ahead and get into our lesson on the Epic of Gilgamesh and the characters that are represented within this tale. Let's go ahead and get into our learning goal and our learning targets for today's lesson. Now our standard for today is again going to be standard two, describe the emergence of early civilizations. Our learning goal for today is going to be to determine the impact of key figures from ancient Mesopotamian civilizations. And we're also going to be doing a review of the seven characteristics of civilization so we can identify which ones are represented by the Epic of Gilgamesh. Our learning targets for today are again going to be the review of those seven characteristics of civilization with an emphasis on epic literature writing, and the inventions categories. Let's go ahead and get into our lesson on the characters in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Now, the Epic of Gilgamesh is a representation of not just one of our seven characteristics of civilization, which is writing, but also invention, and specifically the invention of epic literature. Now, like I said, Gilgamesh is a representation of epic literature in ancient civilizations. Now, the first person we're going to start off with is, of course, Gilgamesh, because he is the main character of this story. Now, Gilgamesh is described as a very handsome and powerful man. He is two parts God and one part human. Gilgamesh is king of Yurok, and in the story we find out that he is theoretically seen to be the fifth king of Yurok. We also find out that Gilgamesh is a terrible king at the beginning of his story. So in the Epic of Gilgamesh, he does grow the most because Gilgamesh starts off with being sort of a very rapey king and then grows into a more mature person. However, that is for the story. Our next character is going to be Enkidu. Now Enkidu is described as a burly, handsome, but hairy wild man who lives in the forest with the animals. Enkidu is discovered by a hunter and that hunter creates the plan in which gets Enkidu to face off with Gilgamesh. Enkidu is actually created by one of the gods in order to be able to be Gilgamesh's match because the people were pleading for help. Now, as I mentioned, we also have the hunter who is known as the stalker as well. Now, the hunter is the person who doesn't really have a name. However, he is quintessential in getting Enkidu out of the woods and into the action in the city of Yuruk. Our next character that we're going to meet is Shamat. Now, Shamat is a temple prostitute, and she is the one who entices and lures Enkidu away from the woods. She lays out and entices him into sex. Now, Enkidu, having had sex with a person, has now alienated himself from the animal world. The animals no longer come to him, and he has to find a place in the world of men. Shamat takes him and introduces him to a shepherd and all of the luxuries of the human world, including food, alcohol, architecture, and a lot of the other things that we see in the seven characteristics of civilization. 
we also meet Urshanabi, the pilot of the ferry boat that travels to where Utnapishtim lives. And he is the protector of the mysterious stone things. The hunter or stalker. In the story, we also meet Utnapishtim. Utnapishtim and his wife actually are two different characters. We do not know his wife's name. However, Utnapishtim and his wife were granted immortality by the gods after the great flood. They are considered the Noah and Noah's wife of ancient Mesopotamia. So they were the ones who were given the input from one of the gods who empathized with humankind, and they were told that they needed to build an ark. So Utnapishtim did this, and this is why humanity survived. And next up, we have the deities and demons list. So the deities and demons that we find in the Epic of Gilgamesh are the same ones that we will find in mythology of ancient Mesopotamia. Now our first god that we're going to be looking at is the god Anu, the father of the gods and the god of the firmament. Next up we have Aruru, a goddess of creation who fashioned Enkidu from clay and her spittle. Then we see Ea, the god of fresh water, crafts, and wisdom, a patron of humankind. Ea lives in Apsu, the primal waters below the earth. So Humbaba is a demon that protects the cedar forest, and the cedar forest is completely supposed to be off limits to mortals. Humbaba actually wears the seven garments or pieces of clothing, which are supposed to strike fear in anyone who sees him. His mouth is fire, he roars like a flood, and he breathes death, much like an erupting volcano. In his very last moments, he acquires personality and pathos, which we'll learn more about in the story. We also meet the Scorpion Man. Now, the Scorpion Man and his wife are guardians of the twin peaked mountain called Mashu. Amashu is the mountain that the god Shamash travels through in order to cause sunrise and sunset. We also meet Siduri, the goddess of winemaking and brewing. Now she's actually a veiled tavern keeper in this story and Gilgamesh is not really sure that she's a god. We also meet Siduri, the goddess of winemaking and brewing. She's also the Veiled Tavern Keeper that comforts and helps Gilgamesh on his journey for immortality. Ereshkigal is a terrifying queen of the underworld. Ishtar is the goddess of love and fertility, as well as the goddess of war. Now, Ishtar is frequently called the Queen of Heaven. She is incredibly capricious and is at times either a nurturing mother or incredibly spiteful and cruel. She's also the patroness of Yuruk, and she has her own temple. We also meet Tammuz, the god of vegetation and fertility. Also called the shepherd, he was born immortal, and Tammuz is the husband of Ishtar. We also meet Enlil, god of earth, wind, and air, a superior deity. Enlil is not a big fan of humankind, and he's actually the person that decides to cause the Great Flood. And we also meet Lulubanda. Now, Lulubanda is believed by some to be the father of Gilgamesh. However, he is or was the third king of Yuruk after the Great Flood. Now, Gilgamesh is believed to have been the fifth king of Yuruk after the Great Flood. Lulubanda is considered to be the protector and is sometimes called father of Gilgamesh and he is also a minor god. Next up we meet Ninsun who is the mother of Gilgamesh and wife of Lulubanda. She is a minor goddess as well and she's noted for her wisdom. And finally we meet Shamash, the sun god and patron of Gilgamesh. Now, Shamash is actually seen throughout the story because he does help Gilgamesh and Enkidu in a number of different ways. However, Shamash is also brother to Ishtar, the goddess of love and fertility. Now, Shamash is also known for bringing sunrise and sunset as he is the god of the sun, and he is also known to be a wise judge and lawgiver. 
We did actually learn a bit about Shamash in the episode on Hammurabi and his code because it is believed and shown in Hammurabi Sili that Shamash was the one who presented him with the code of laws that governed the ancient Mesopotamian people in the city of Sumer. Well, there you have it. That is the lineup for characters we're going to meet in the Epic of Gilgamesh. If you have any questions, please make sure you drop those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. However, I want you to go ahead and stay tuned because we will have another lesson up very soon that goes over the story of Gilgamesh in a more condensed version. However, now you're actually going to be a little bit more familiar with the characters as we meet them along the way. If you like this channel and you enjoyed this episode, please make sure that you are hitting that like and subscribe button. Also, please make sure to find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Patreon under History with Audrey D. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope to see you in the next lesson. Have a fantastic day.